Thank you all for joining us on this very exciting day. There's no doubt the last 12 months have been very difficult for our nation, our state, and our university. We keep in our prayers those who are battling COVID, those who have lost their lives to COVID, and their families. We pray that our nation heals from this pandemic and all the issues we are facing. During the early months of the pandemic, our former president resigned and the Board of Regents felt it was critical we put leadership in place quickly to work with faculty, staff, and students to deal with the crisis. We are grateful that Jay Hartzell was willing to take on the task of interim president and did such a great job, he was named permanent president shortly thereafter. During these trying times, I've had the honor and privilege to work with Jay as our president and Chris Del Delconi, our athletic director. Both of these men have rolled up their sleeves and worked tirelessly to keep our great university moving forward. I'm proud and grateful to both of them for their service to this great institution, which leads us to this monumental day for the Texas Longhorn football program. At the University of Texas, we have a proud tradition of competing at the highest level amongst the elite programs in college football. And in honor of that tradition, we never settle for anything short of excellence. We don't do things halfway. We continue to challenge our leadership, coaches, student athletes, and staff to take hold of what it means to be a Texas Longhorn and collectively compete for and achieve our great ambitions. President Hartzell, Athletic Director Del Delconi, and I firmly believe that Steve brings the coaching experience, leadership, and determination necessary to deliver the highest level of success for our program, both on and off the field. We're excited to begin this, begin this new chapter and welcome Sark to Longhorn Nation. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Eltai. Next up, we'll have UT President Jay Hartzell. Good afternoon. My name is Jay Hartzell, and I'm honored to serve as the president of the University of Texas at Austin. I want to say thanks to Chairman Eltai and Crystal Conte and Coach Sarkeesian for getting us here today. I love this place, and I'm a Longhorn, and today is a great day to be a Longhorn. We seek to be excellent in what we do, whether it's in the laboratory, in the classroom, or on the football field. We're in the talent business, and we believe that we bring together talented students, faculty, staff, and alumni. Great things happen. We recruit the best and brightest to the University of Texas, and today presents the latest example of that, as we've recruited one of the best and brightest coaches in the world to join us here at UT. We want all of our students to be the best in whatever they pursue. Hiring Coach Sarkeesian is a critical investment in our football program's future to position our students and our student athletes to be the best. If you're around Steve, you can feel the energy radiating from him. And it's not just football. You can hear his passion for developing the whole person, making sure student athletes are ready for success in all facets of their lives, on and off the field. I'm excited to see the impact Coach Sark will have on our student athletes and the broader university. Our entire community benefits from a healthy and successful athletics program, and it sure makes life on the 40 acres more, more enjoyable and rewarding for many of us. Naming Steve as our coach will give our football program the guidance and expertise to get us to the next level. I can't wait to see what the team accomplishes under his leadership. By my, by my calculation, we're only 235 days away from the next game, 235 days and counting. With that, I'm delighted to turn it over to our athletic director, Crystal Conte. I also want to give a shout out to Chris, who probably destroyed his entire holiday season getting us to this point today. Uh, and I feel, as president, very grateful that he's our athletic director. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chris. Thanks, boss and boss. Hi, everybody. What a great day for the University of Texas. Uh, first and foremost, before I introduce uh, Coach Sarkeesian, I want to thank both of you all. This past month has been one of the most enjoyable months of my life, getting a chance to be challenged by you daily, to talk about what the University of Texas is. And I, I realized that when we ultimately decided to make a change and we had the discussion, I said to both of you, 
We're going to make a change. I need your help. We're going to have a committee of three, and I've never been in line with two individuals in my life like I've been with the two of you. To have a chairman of the Board of Trustees and Kevin Altife graciously agree to help us in the search process, and my boss, who is an incredible president for the University of Texas, Jay Harsel says, let's do this. Let's do this together. And we went about the idea of finding the talented person to lead our program. And through these discussions, we were having these great discussions, throwing out names about who could be, and we're vetting uh, coaches. I love Coach uh, uh, Chairman Altaib. He goes, how about that boy, Sark? He's a hell of a coach. I said, Coach Sarkeesian? Oh, yeah. I kind of laughed. I said, I like him, too. And Jay goes, oh, uh, he's the guy. Probably the first time I sat there and walked out of that meeting going, holy cow, we actually agree. We had our guy, and we had a guy through the difficult conversations of where we wanted the University of Texas to go. And Steve, your life journey and what you've accomplished. There's a sign in the waiting room that says, University of Texas winning tradition shall not be entrusted with the timid nor the weak. We need someone that was battle tested, someone that understood what the University of Texas is, someone that understood that we are about winning championships. And looking back at your career, what you did at USC, the idea that you're offered the head coach of the Raiders at 31, head coach of Washington at 33. I couldn't imagine that responsibility and pressure on me at 33. And to see what you've done, and then got to a position you said, you know what, I went to USC, did my very best, and overcome the issues that you wanted to overcome. And the proud way that you say, I'm ready to leave this program today. I'm a better coach today and a better man today for who I've been and who I am, inspired. Chairman Altaif inspired Mr. Hartzell, or President Hartzell. We sat there and said, this is who we want. I am so proud that you are our head football coach. I cannot wait to see what you do. If there's any indication of what happened last night, come on. <laughs> uh, you want, let's do this. Our student athletes are excited. Longhorn Nation is excited. But more importantly, I just want to welcome you to the Longhorn family. Because today, the eyes of Texas are upon us and they're upon you, and we're thrilled that they are. I appreciate you very much. I'd like to introduce you to your brand new head coach, Coach Steve Sarkeesian, and his wife, L'Oreal. L'Oreal, nice to see you, dear. You look fabulous. Come on up, Steve. Welcome, my friend. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Awesome. That's great. Whew. Wow, thank you. Um, it sure is great to be on the 40 acres. Uh, I am, uh, I'm so honored and humbled to be the head football coach at the University of Texas. Uh, the support, the excitement, the fan base, the alumni, the former players, uh, th this has just been an incredible process. Um, this is truly, in my eyes, and, and has been for some time now, one of the marquee jobs in America. Uh, and I'm grateful to have the opportunity. And um, I do know this, you know, I, I think one thing when you talk about Texas and I think of the University of Texas is this is not something you can do alone. Uh, we need a unified Longhorn Nation. Um, it's going to take all of us collectively uh, working, in the, working in the same direction to achieve the goals uh, that clearly we want to achieve. Um, you know, the energy and excitement for our program right now uh, I think is one that is, is directly effective in it, to what's happening in recruiting. Um, from the moment I got hired uh, up until last night after the game and, and getting a commitment to the program already for, from an in-state player, I mean, that, that just tells you about, I think, where the excitement of Longhorn football is right now. Um, and ultimately, our goal is to build a brand of football that, that everybody's proud of, uh, that people can turn on games on TV, uh, that, that come to DKR Memorial Stadium and say, that's my football team, and that's something I'm proud of, and I'm proud of the way they play. Uh, that they do things the right way, uh, that they have a really good time doing it, that they're enjoying what they're getting to do and ultimately competing for championships. You know, I'd like, before we get any further, to the, the thank yous that are needed uh, for the process that, uh, that has taken place. And I know that uh, this was a process for, for parties involved. Obviously, most notably, President Hartzell, uh, thank you. Uh, Chairman of the board, Kevin Altype, thank you. 
clearly athletic director Chris Delcani, thank you. Uh, and CNO, CO Sean L, uh, Icors, thank you. And everybody else involved in this process because clearly this is a process and uh, it takes time to get to this point. This is clearly a big decision. Uh, and I'm humbled and honored uh, that, that uh, this job was, was afforded to me uh, and one that uh, I take a great appreciation to be the leader of Texas football. You know, Chris mentioned this, and I noticed it earlier when I, when I walked into the building, the sign that was downstairs that read, the pride and winning tradition of the Texas Long, Longhorns is not to be entrusted to the weak or timid. Uh, and I truly take a lot of pride in that myself. Clearly, uh, I've had a lot of highs in this profession. Um, I had a lot of self-searching in this profession. Uh, I had to climb my way back in this profession. Uh, and none of that would have happened if I was timid or weak. And so I, 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 that, that caught my attention because I do think it speaks to me. Uh, and I think clearly um, who I am and what I am will be someone, as people get to know me, as an authentic human. Uh, one, whether you're a player, a donor, a recruit, uh, a recruit's parent. One that you feel is real and honest and upfront, and one that you can relate to. Because I do think that is really, really important. Um, the history and tradition of this program um, clearly is at, the, is at the top of the country. When you talk about the national championships, the Heisman Trophy winners, uh, the legendary players that have played here, uh, all of those that have laid a foundation. And all those things started with Coach Royal uh, and the style of play that his teams played with, the physicality, the toughness that they played with uh, is definitely going to be something that we want to embody in the program as we move forward. Then you think about the great players that have been here. Uh, Earl Campbell, Ricky Williams, uh, and then one who sit here today, Vince Young. And uh, I can remember that 2005 national championship game and being on the opposite sidelines and uh, watching him run that ball in the end zone and watching those stands and watching the roar and seeing the, the burnt orange and white, uh, the hookums, I mean, all of the, the rich history and tradition that was there that day. Uh, and now here I am today standing before these men uh, and women uh, and, all of, uh, and all of the state of Texas and this great university uh, as a head football coach. And that is very humbling uh, and it's an honor. I think about this logo, I think about the colors, I think about the brand of Texas football, uh, I think about the uniforms, the helmets, uh, all of which are iconic staples in college football. Uh, this clearly is the flagship university in the great state of Texas and I'm truly fortunate to be leading it. Um, throughout my career, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a few men that were mentors of mine uh, that helped me get to this place. And one of which was documented earlier in the week, but I had a coach at junior college by the name of John Featherstone, uh, who at that time I was a baseball player and uh, he was a health teacher that talked me into going back to playing football again when I was in junior college. Uh, then I went on to BYU and got to play for the legendary Lavelle Edwards. Uh, who we had a tremendous run with and you know, finished off my senior season with the win in the Cotton Bowl right here in the great state of Texas. And then I got a chance to work for seven seasons under Pete Carroll, who clearly to this day is still a tremendous mentor of mine. Uh, and then lastly but not least, Nick Saban. Uh, and the opportunity that he gave me at the University of Alabama uh, and guided me and showed me and mentored me away uh, in a new way, in a way that I think is, has shaped me now to be prepared for this opportunity. Um, you know, everything we're going to do in this program is going to be centered around what is best for our players. Our goal is to put our players in the best position to be successful, whether that's in life, whether that's on the football field, or in the classroom. Uh, they will be the priority of our program, uh, and we will make sure we have everything in place around, uh, surrounding them to put them in the best position to do that. And I think that starts with building uh, you know, authentic relationships with them. I think it's getting to know them, and that'll be one of the key components here as I'm getting now on campus here uh, of getting to know our football team and getting to know our players individually because I think it's critically important to have that relationship for them to be able to open up to me and for me to be able to open up to them. You know, the entire focus here has got to be about chasing greatness. And I think everybody at the end of the day has this idea that we want to win. Right? Everybody wants to win, right? Everybody does their opening press conference every year about we want to win, or their press conference on a Monday about wanting to win Saturday. Clearly, we're going to be the same way, but ultimately, we have to focus on 
the task at hand, all right, the daily process so that everybody walking into this building that comes to work uh, is focused on being the best version of themselves every single day and building towards those goals, building towards that greatness that we all want to achieve. All right, and when we get there, uh, it's going to be very gratifying. Um, I also think our style of play will be, uh, I don't want to call it unique, but one that we will hang our hat on, which is definitely an, is an exciting brand of football, one that is attacking, uh, whether that's on offense, defense, or special teams, uh, one that will prepare our players to execute uh, and execute at a high level. Uh, our goal is to out-prepare and out-coach our opponents every single week. And that takes work, right? N nothing we do in this, in this industry uh, you get without working hard. And so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll hire a staff that is smart, that is bright, uh, that has great personalities, but yet has a tremendous work ethic uh, so that we can achieve the greatness that, that we're all striving for. Uh, clearly at this point, our top two priorities are finalizing our staff, uh, and then finalizing our recruiting class. Uh, you know, those two things to me right now, until our players get back on campus a weekend now, which will be the third piece to the, the component, uh, is where our focus will be. Um, from our current players, it's going to be about building the relationships, like we said. Um, I think we've got a very talented, good young roster. Clearly, uh, we had some, some close losses a year ago, so there's talent here. Our job is to continue to develop it so that we can overcome some of those tight losses and get ourselves into a championship game and see where we can go from there from a playoff standpoint. To the high school coaches in the state of Texas, this is your program. Our doors are always open. Um, I have so much respect for the high school football in the state of Texas. Uh, the great programs, the rich history and tradition, the great players that have come from your programs. Um, couldn't be more proud and, and, and humbled to be your head coach. And I look forward to creating those relationships with you as well. Because I do think it is vitally important for the University of Texas Longhorns to get back to the top of college football. We need to keep the best players in the state of Texas home. And that will be the priority when it comes to recruiting. Um, like I said before, I'm, I'm, I'm honored. I'm humbled uh, to be the head football coach here. Um, our job is now to align the donors, the alumni, the ex-players, the current players, the recruits, and pushing everybody in the same direction to go achieve the greatness that we want to achieve. To Longhorn Nation, uh, it's time to go to work. Uh, and clearly, you guys have probably seen my mantra, this work will be all gas and no brakes. We will go to it full-fledged. We will lay down on the hammer and go get it. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, to put on the burn orange and white and to represent this great university in the great state of Texas uh, is one I don't take lightly, uh, and we will go for it to the highest level. Hook them. Thank you, Coach. We'll now begin our Q&A session. Uh, remember, guys, use the hand raise function if you have a question, and uh, please limit your questions to one at a time so we can get through as many as possible uh, during the time we have for the press conference. Uh, and we will go ahead and start with Cedric Golden. Hey, Steve. Um, what lessons did you take from your stops with Pete Carroll and um, Coach Saban that uh, maybe <clears throat> you didn't use in your first stops as coach, as a head coach, but you can use now after those experiences? Yeah, I think the one thing, Coach Carroll and Coach Saban, I, I think the end result is very clear. They both want to win. Uh, they both want to develop young men into, into grown men. Um, I think they have the best interests of their players at heart. But the one lesson I got out of it was they did it their own way. Um, we all see Pete Carroll on the sidelines, the fun, energetic, upbeat personality that he has. And then we all see Nick Saban on the sidelines and the stern focus uh, and drive that he has. Both of which work, right? They've both worked for each of them. Nick, uh, Pete Carroll's a national championship in college, Super Bowl champion in the NFL. Nick Saban, arguably the, the, the greatest college football coach of all time, seven national championships, both of which work. And what I got out of it was you got to you got to know who you are. You got to have a belief in who you are, and you have to stick to your beliefs. Uh, neither of which wavered for those guys. I think it took them some time to figure out who they were. Clearly, I've had that time to do that, and I think once you can put those, those principles in place and, and stick to your guns and it's not one year we're this, the next year we're that, uh, you believe in who you are. And, and at that point, 
then you start to build your program. And uh, I think those two guys actually showed me two different ways of doing it, both of which were effective. Dennis Dodd, go ahead. Hey, Sar, congratulations. Um, Thank you. I, I, as good as your offense is and has been, I wonder how much time you spend, you know, staying up at night wondering how I stay ahead. Is someone going to figure this out someday? Not just you, but everybody who runs spread RPOs. Um, will defenses ever catch up to it? Well, it's funny you say that, Dennis, because it's really been an evolution for me. I, I believe you have to remain on the cutting edge. This is not something where you can just say, hey, rinse and repeat. We're going to do the same thing again. We're always trying to find a new way to do something. We're always trying to find a new wrinkle. We're always trying to find a new formation, a motion, a shift, a personnel grouping. Um, and at the end of the day, hopefully we do stay one step ahead. And, um, you know, I, I don't like to, you know, I like to think they're, they're trying to play catch up to me. Um, clearly that's the challenge, especially when you're taking over a new program because you have to, you know, install a new system uh, to the players here. Uh, but not only you install a new system, you know, everybody's studying my tape for the last two, three years. And so we're not only installing a new system, but we're building on that system. Uh, but I think it's a fun system, and I think it's exciting, and I think the players will, will really you know, enjoy being part of it because of the wrinkles and the nuances to it. But ultimately, success is needed, right? Success is needed for these players to buy in, uh, and it's going to be critical that we have some. Chuck Carlton, go ahead. Uh, yes, I was curious from, from last night's championship game, in terms of building momentum, could you have asked for – anything more in terms of an advertisement of what you want to bring to Texas and what kind of feedback just in the last 18 hours have you gotten since then? Well, I, I think, you know, clearly I was excited for our players at Alabama. I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that. Those kids put in a lot of hard work. And again, I'm a believer uh, in the success of our players. And so that, that piece is first and foremost. But for us here at Texas, I, I think it generated a lot of excitement. I think it generated a lot of excitement from a recruiting standpoint. I think it generated a lot of excitement for our current players on our roster. I think we felt that. And I think it generated a lot of excitement from donors, alumni, fan base. Um, so all in all, you know, th there's some excitement there. Now it's our, our job to capitalize on it, continue to build on that excitement um, so that that flame doesn't fizzle out. We need that flame to continue to burn uh, with the excitement about uh, about Longhorn football. Roger Wallace, you're up. Coach, I, I'm curious your, your emotion because you've had this unique <clears throat> gap between being named head coach, going back to work to Alabama. You, you said last week you didn't have to be a head coach again. It had to be the right situation. What are the emotions now that, that it's so real and you're, you're standing here? You know, for me, the emotions are – like I said, I think, one, I'm humbled, I'm honored. Um, you know, the, the old adage is you've never really coached until you've been fired. Uh, and and you know, when you experience that, I think that you go one of two, a lot of coaches go one of two ways. And it really drove me just to be the best coach I could be. I wasn't worried about if I was ever going to be a head coach again. I just wanted to be the best coach, the best version of Steve Sarkeesian every day. Like, how could I get better? How could I get better? Is there a better way to run this play? Is there a better way to, to install this play? Uh, is there a better way to recruit? Is there, I just kept looking for ways to get better and better and better. And then ultimately it was, oh, now all of a sudden there are some opportunities to become a head coach again. And I had to take a step back and say, you know, if I'm going to do this again, I want it to be right. Uh, I want it to be the right situation at the right university with the right people. Um, and there was a lot of no's, right? There was a lot of no's. And then when Texas called, it was like, well, wait a minute. That's, that one's a yes. This is a yes. This is what I want to go do. Uh, this is a tremendous opportunity. And I feel probably more excitement but yet ready to go to work. I, I'm still, this isn't, this isn't a destination day for me. This is kind of a, a stop on the road to say, okay, this is where I am now. But the same mindset's not going to change for me. It's, we got to keep going to work. And that's why I use the adage, all gas, no brakes. Like, we got to keep going. We've got to keep going. I want our players to feel that mentality that this isn't a destination day. That, okay, now I can relax. I'm the head coach at Texas. This is, uh, all right, here's an opportunity day. Now what are we going to do with it? Brian Davis, you're next. 
Hey, Steve, congratulations on last night. Thank you. Uh, you know, there, were, there are players on this roster, and uh, there are players all over Texas, recruits all over Texas who watch that game, and they probably thought, you know, I can be the next Najee. I can be the next Devontae. What do, what do you want them thinking about your program and Texas football going forward? Well, I think, you know, when you see those types of players, I think it's always good that we have goals and aspirations and I, I, I can fit into a system. I can, it can look like that for me. All of those are great. But then we have to scale it back and go back to the process of it all. How did those kids get to that point? And that's what we have to instill in the kids here, whether they're currently on our roster or the ones that we bring in, that, yes, we all have goals and, and aspirations of things we want to achieve and what we want things to look like. Now we got to peel it back and say, okay, we got to go to work. And this is how the work we need to put in to get to that point. And when you can focus on the task at hand, knowing that that, that is still out there for you, but yet this is what is important today, uh, and today is the most important day, that's when we're really going to really capture our players. And, and when we can get to that point and capture our players to today is the most important day, be the best versions of ourselves today, regardless of what the drill is, regardless of what the tempo of the day is, uh, regardless if it's a workout in the weight room or if it's study hall or class or community service, that, that is the most important thing for the day because those things will add up to who you are from a character standpoint. And at the end of the day, your character is what's going to stand out. And I think, you know, we're going to have to instill that. And I think there's a lot of that already in this program. Now it's our job to continue to build upon it and continue to develop the players. I'm Mark Richardson. Go ahead. Uh, hello, Coach. Um, congratulations again on the win. Um, you know, you're, I, I'm, I'm wanting to know what your message would be to a, a fan base that <coughs> hasn't had a, a Big 12 title since 2009 and only one appearance uh, since then, and that is thirsty for wins. And I also want to know what's your message to recruits in the state of Texas who have kind of grown accustomed to going out of state to the bigger name programs and about why they should be coming back to the University of Texas? Well, I think the message is, um, you know, I came here to win championships. You know, that, that's the goal. We're, we're here to chase greatness, to win championships. That's why I'm here. Um, that's what's going to drive us every single day. Um, but that won't be the hope that we will. That is putting in the work to develop the confidence that we will. And I think when, when people see our brand of football, it will be one that is exciting, that is attacking. Uh, but at the end of the day, the results are the results. And so understanding we are a result-driven industry, let's get back to work and put in the work so that we can get the results that we want. And to do that, you have to put yourself in position to win championships. It's not about just winning the championship. How do you put yourself in the best position to be successful when that time comes? And a lot of times that's, you know, that's July 4th. You know, it's like, hey, I got to make a great decision. It's the 4th of July. We're not working out. But if my focus is on the team and the accountability to my teammates, maybe I make a little better decision there. So all of these things will start to add up to where we become that championship program. Uh, and I truly believe that day will come. Like I said, I think, and I don't think it's going to take us as long uh, as many might think. We've got a talented young roster. I think we're going to hire a tremendous coaching staff. Um, and we're going to continue to recruit the best players in the state of Texas. Uh, and I think as we, as we start to look back and they see our brand of football, they see the type of team that we have, the close-knit camaraderie that our team's going to have, the way our team works, and then what we put on the field, people will want to join this. I, you know, I, I promise you that. People are going to want to be part of this program. We've got tremendous facilities. We got great, uh, we've got great support from our, from our fan base. Um, and at the end of the day, this is the University of Texas, and people are going to want to be part of it. Bob Ballou, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Welcome to Austin. Um, you've thrown for more yards against Texas A&M in a game than any player ever has. I'm curious if you could take us back to that game <laughs> in 1996 and just what you remember from it. And then second, how, how did John Featherstone uh, get you to, to quit, uh, quit baseball and play football? Well, um, you know, I, I probably go with the John Featherstone story first. Uh, I literally was a baseball player. Uh, I just transferred back from USC. Uh, I was in a health class, and 
man, I couldn't hit I couldn't hit when the ball moved. I could hit it when it was going straight. I didn't hit it very good when that thing started moving, whether it was a curveball or a slider. He just got me to come out, and I, I was down on the depth chart and just kind of worked my way up. But we had a tremendous bond. Um, he's someone who has definitely impacted my life. Um, so that was, uh, that was a tremendous moment thinking back on where my life is today. None of this would have ever happened if it weren't for John Featherstone. Uh, that game in 1996, the Pigskin Classic against A&M, um, was just one of those moments. We thought we had a pretty good football team. Um, we thought we could throw it around a little bit at BYU with Coach Edwards. Clearly, we, we did that day and um, had to come up with a couple big throws there at the end of the game and, and a couple big plays by wideouts. But uh, oddly enough, that year was unique that we ended up beating A&M uh, the first game of the year and then winning the Cotton Bowl here in, here in Texas. So looking back on it now, it, it's, it's exciting to think that, wow, here we, come, here we come full circle being back in the great state of Texas. Chip Brown, you're up. Hey, Steve. Um, I used to do a radio show with Sean Adams, <clears throat> who I, I know is a, a friend of yours and is looking down happy uh, for you today. But um, I wanted to uh, ask you, how are you a better leader of young men right now uh, than you were as a head coach previously? Well, I think clearly, you know, when, when you go through adversity in life and you, and you have perseverance, um, and you have real life examples of what perseverance looks like, and then you're willing to share those with young men uh, that they can say, this guy's real, man. This guy's authentic. Um, this guy is telling us real life things about, hey, here's a way to go about it. And, and my job ultimately with these guys is to just show them a better way, show them a way where they can continue to grow um, because they need the guidance. They need the, they need the leadership. And um, like I said, you know, at 33 years old, taking over a program, uh, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm laughing now thinking back, how was I even ready at 33 to go do that, you know? And, and you do it to the best of your ability. And at that time, I, I inherited the University of Washington, and they were 0-12 they were the year before, and we ended up going to four straight bowl games, you know? So a lot of which I did at that time was the right way of going about it. But I think back more so now at, I would do that differently. I would have done that differently. I would have handled that situation differently. Um, so just through experience, you know, through through perseverance, uh, because ultimately, you know, the game of football is about perseverance, and especially in this day and age of college football, with opt opt outs, with transfers, um, you know, this is this is the 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 idea of persevering through difficult times. Um, is not at the forefront of a young man's mind right now. And we need to instill that back in them because that is the game of football. Um, I likened to the, last night's ball game, the third drive of the game, sack fumble, it's a turnover. Ohio State ties the game up 14-all. I would say two years ago, I don't know if Mac Jones would have responded the way he did to come back out and lead us right back down for a score. So the perseverance that's needed in game in football, I think we learn how to do that off the field in life. And so those are the things you lead as a leader of men. Kirk Bowles, go ahead. Yes, yeah, Steve, uh, other than that Cotton Bowl game, you don't have a lot of Texas connections or roots. Uh, what have you been told about maybe any do's and don'ts about being the head coach at Texas so you don't repeat any mistakes others have made? Well, I know not to go thumbs up and it's hook them. I know that much. So uh, let's start with that. And, and I know it's uh, Texas first before the other school. So those two things jumped out at me today. Um, but, you know, more importantly is I think it's about developing relationships. And I, I, I don't know, I don't mean to speak, you know, like I'm sitting here pat myself on the back, but I really try to develop authentic relationships with people, whether it's you all in the media, whether it's our players, whether it's recruits, whether it's our administration, um, whether it's our donors, because I think when people find out you're authentic, I, you know, I could be from Mars, but at the end of the day, I'm an authentic guy. I want to get to know you, and, and I want you to know me. Um, and through that, that's how you can kind of build people and bring people in and, and build your program. And so um, I'll get connected, and it's not going to come overnight, but I'll get connected, and, and we'll develop those relationships that are needed. Jeff Jones, you're up. Coach, welcome to town. Uh, Thank you. You've mentioned a few times about the talent on the roster and how the talent 
currently present is, is good enough to win a few games. Um, what excites you most about the talent that is currently here? Well, I think clearly there's a lot of speed on this roster. Um, this is a young roster. It's got a lot of speed. It's got a lot of athleticism. Um, you know, as we start to really dig into the roster and the roster management, we got to make sure that we have uh, appropriate scholarships in place at the specific positions that are needed for our schemes. Uh, but just looking at it from afar initially, uh, watching a few games, watching a few games on TV, uh, talking to some of the kids now. I've been able to talk to a few of the players on the team here for the last week or so. Um, we've got a talented team. We've got an athletic team. We've got speed on this team. Um, we just got to make sure we've got the right pieces in place at the positions we need to make sure that we can go where we want to go. Nick Moyle, you're up. Hey, Steve. Um, I'm just curious, you know, how closely you followed the Eyes of Texas debate over the past few months. And, um, you know, what are your thoughts on that issue? And do you plan on opening a dialogue with the players or have you begun that yet? Well, I, I know this much. The Eyes of Texas is, is our school song. And, you know, we support that song. We're going to sing that song. We're going to sing it proudly. Um, I think I think when when I come into the fold, I think any talks that need to have, whether it's about the eyes of Texas or any other issues that come up, I think it's having the discussions. We can't put our head in the sand uh, and act like things aren't happening. We have to really have those discussions with them uh, and educate our players to make sure that we're all on the same page and understanding that. I think sometimes there are tough discussions that need to have that need to happen. Um, you know, without speaking too cannily, we're living in a country right now where there's some turmoil going on. But as long as we can have those discussions and be on the same page, we can do that. As it pertains to the eyes of Texas, man, that's our song, and we're fired up to sing it. Mark Rosner, you're up. Uh, Steve, you mentioned opportunities you've had. Uh, was uh, eventual successor to Nick Saban one of them? And if so, was that tempting to stick around? Well, I don't, I don't ever like to, you know, talk about specific opportunities that, may, that have been before or may have not happened before. Uh, I do know whoever replaces Nick Saban's got a tall task in front of him. Uh, you're talking, like I said, about the greatest college football coach of all time. Um, you know, this guy has done it better than anybody. He's a leader of men. He develops young men. There's so much, so many attributes you could say about him. So, um, if that opportunity would have presented itself, clearly uh, it had been something to think about. But, you know, we're at a point now where I'm the head coach at Texas, and I'm fired up about it, I'm pumped about it, and uh, couldn't be more proud. Steven Wagner, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, a few players have already spoken out publicly about wanting to keep certain assistance from the last coaching <clears throat> staff. Um, how much influence will player opinion have on your decision um, on your decisions hiring or choosing to retain uh, coaches on this new staff? You know, I, I think generally speaking, anytime there's a coaching change, um, there's mixed emotions, right, for players on a roster. Um, some feel one way, some feel another way. And I think my job coming in now as, as a new head coach is to make sure we're assembling a staff that has the best interests of our players at heart, um, whether that's uh, from a developmental piece, from a relationship piece, whatever those things are. And, and we'll, we'll clearly convey that to the players of, of why we did what we did with our staff and the direction that we went in. Uh, it is truly for the betterment of them, at least in our opinion. And now those, develop, those, those relationships that are needed that need to get built between coaches and players, they'll get built. And um, some of which will coaches from the previous staff will be on the staff, some of which will be coaches from the outside coming in. So I think assembling a staff is, is like forming a jigsaw puzzle. And there's, there's intricate pieces that need to get put in place uh, when you start thinking about recruiting, when you start thinking about development of players, when you start thinking about uh, calling plays on game day. There's a lot that goes into it. When you start thinking about the culture you're trying to build in your building, there's a lot that goes into it. And um, you know, I think our players will understand that over time, but I, but I recognize when some players want to keep a coach. There are mixed emotions that go into this thing, and so it's our job when we do assemble our staff and get everything in place uh, to present these guys in the best light, and then it's everybody's, it's everybody's job to, to be open-minded, to develop the relationships needed to, to grow. Got time for three final questions. We'll start with Jeff. Hey, Steve, uh, in regards to hiring a defensive coordinator, not necessarily, you know, odd front versus even front or things like that, but 
stylistically, philosophically, what are you looking for in that position to play the kind of complementary football with your offense that ideally you want to play at Texas? Well, I do have a, definitely an idea of how I want defense to be played. A, I've talked about being an attacking defense. I, I, I think you can't play defense on your heels. You have to be the one that is attacking the offense. You have to make the offense the offensive players, the offensive coaches on the opposing teams feel uncomfortable, and, and we have to generate that. But college football is, is a unique phase right now with what's happening uh, from an offensive standpoint. And so when you start talking about you know, minimizing explosive plays, stopping the run, uh, creating turnovers, getting stops in the red area, um, affecting the other team's quarterback, there, there's a lot of bullet points that you start to get to. Uh, but for the most part, you got to be able to attack the opponent. You need to make people uncomfortable. Our job is to keep them out of the end zone. Our job is to go attack the football on defense. And so how we get to all that specifically, to your point, yeah, we'll figure all that out. But there is definitely a brand and style of play uh, that we're looking for. Max Olson, you're up. Hi, Coach. I know the motto is all gas, no breaks. But do you hope that people have reasonable expectations and a little bit of patience with this process? Or are you good with, good with the hype? Well, I mean, I think anytime you make a set, anytime you make a change, it's like signing date and recruiting, right? Everybody just signed the best class in the country. Everybody's nobody ever says we, we didn't sign a good class when it comes to recruiting classes. You know, everybody spins it, you know. But so at the end of the day, the hype is good. I think the hype is great. You know, but we need to go back to work. We can't live in a fantasy world and and, and what it's gonna look like, you know, I think President Hartzell said two hundred and sixty five days from now. It, it is the, what are we going to put on the field? What is the product that we put on the field? And so that takes the daily work. And so, again, we all want goals. We all have aspirations. We all want to win. Now we need to go to work. And um, I, I don't mind the excitement. I think it's great for the University of Texas. Um, but for us internally, it's about putting in the work so that we can get the results that we want in the end. Eddie Clements, go ahead. Coach, uh, welcome to Austin, and we're glad you're here. There's a little game that Texas doesn't play anymore about 90 miles to the east with the Aggies. Would you be in favor of putting the Aggies back on the schedule and playing Texas A&M uh, again that so many Longhorn fans would really want to see? I would love to play that game. I think it would be great for the, for the state of Texas. but look forward to it. Joe Cook, go ahead. You obviously would not be in Austin if the administration didn't think that a change was necessary, but you've made – seems like you've made the decision to keep a couple of the members of the old regi regime. So what's the right balance for keeping some continuity within the program for what the players are familiar with, but still trying to bring in people you want and make the program how you want it to be? Well, I mean, I think that's 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 the – that's the question, right? I mean, what is the right balance? And, and you're still, you know, we're, we're working our way through that as, you, as we're putting the staff together. Um, because I do think there is some continuity that you, that you like to keep on board. Uh, but there's also the continuity that you're trying to create amongst the staff that's coming in. And so, you know, there's, there is the balance to it. And I don't know every, you know, every job that comes open and a new coach goes in, I don't think it's the same. I, I think it's what's the pulse of, of the team, uh, what, what's the pulse of the head coach and what he's trying to create, what's his style. Um, and then you start putting those pieces together. Um, I think the, the guys that, we, that we're going to hold over, I think, are good fits to what I'm looking for. Um, and ultimately, you know, as we come on board, we are we aren't going to view anybody as he's from the old staff. These guys are from the new staff. We are the current staff, and I think our players need to view it that way, uh, and we need to view it that way as a staff once we get going. Last question, Danny. Steve, how confident are you that you can install both your culture and your system during an off season? I'm sure it's going to have some fluidity as far as dates what you can and can't do uh i'm, I'm very confident you know uh, I, I think now having the year that we had which was you know clearly difficult for everybody involved uh across the nation you know the first thing is i think th these these young men 18 to 22 years old these guys are probably more comfortable on zoom uh than we are right but it took us as coaches time to get comfortable with it uh but in the reality of it is uh, I can say this at Alabama for the last month as an offensive staff, we never met in person. We met on Zoom the entire time, So, and we were still pretty effective. 
you know, so at the end of the day, if it's Zoom, if it's in person, whatever they allowed us to do um, from a pandemic standpoint, we're going to maximize it. We're going to go for it. We're going to take advantage of it. Um, and we're going to grow together as a football team. Thank you, Coach Sarkeesian. Welcome to the town. All righty, y'all. Thank you. Hook them.